I would say at this point, we are well-funded to give pastors sabbaticals. And I think if we needed to, we could find more funding for it. So if you wanted a sabbatical, we can find the funding for it. Uh, typically, uh, what we're doing is we're giving out sabbatical grants. So a church would fill out an application for a grant. Um, and we've set our ordinary maximum at $3,000, which will cover probably three to six months of pulpit supply, depending on the situation. Um, and our goal with the grant is that it can cover anything, but typically it'll cover pulpit supply costs. So it uh, lessens the cost of the church for the pastor to be gone because during a sabbatical, the idea is, is the pastor's continue to make his regular salary. It's not like it's a leave of absence where he's not making anything. That's a really good But point. it helps the church see through that situation. The other thing we're doing with sabbaticals is we are building a stated supply list so that if a church is like, hey, uh, we want to do the sabbatical, um, but who's going to fill the pulpit? Oh, I love this idea. We can help with that too. So we're trying to remove barriers to that happening, uh, which the ones I can think of are stated supply and cost are the two primary ones. Um, the additional issue, and this is why it's helpful to say this uh, on your podcast and elsewhere, is just to kind of keep getting the word out because I don't think enough churches and pastors are even thinking about sabbaticals and it, it just kind of rolls on and nobody's thinking about it. And it, it's not like intentionally avoiding it. It's just no. not thinking about it. This is part of the issue too, because sometimes people think, think in terms of deliverables and especially people that are working in business and, and even in manufacturing, especially you think of time in and product out, like how much time and effort does it take to produce this widget and then just think of it in terms of a of a formula and that that thinking can can even creep in to pastoral ministry where people are asking well how many sermons are you doing oh how long does it take you to do a sermon well i'll tell you what sometimes i might preach a clunker that took me 40 hours <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> and maybe i'm pre and another one came to me in an hour who knows it it isn't i learned very quickly that writing sermons is just one example, but writing sermons is nothing like manufacturing. It's nothing like time in, product out, and you can directly measure how much time and the quality of the product. It is nothing like that. It's mysterious. I don't mean to say it's like mystical and we can't think of it or uh, just let things go the way they go. No, we want to manage our time correctly, but people will tend to think of the sabbatical too as what am I getting out of this? Right. You know, where, where a, a, a congregation might think, well, we're going to let the pastor go for a week, a month, whatever, a few months. What's the product? Is it a book? Is it a sermon series? Sometimes it's just let your horse rest for a while <laughs> and recover yeah, exactly. and gain strength. And we're, and we're all wired differently. It would be one way of putting it, right? So, like, I think that there's a lot of guys – in the OPC that they're just good. And I mean this in a nice way, plotters where yeah. week after week yeah. after week, they can do the morning and evening sermon and mm -hmm. the Sunday school and hospital visits. And that's just how they're wired and they can do it. And that's fantastic and praise the Lord for those gifts. But I think there's another group of ministers that, you know, they, they burn hotter, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and it, it takes more out of them. It costs them more. Right. So like, it's really intense, but then if, when it's more intense and you can't just keep that weekly grind going, you're going to have to figure out a way to take a break if you want to maintain your ministry. And for sessions to recognize that and say, we want to help this man who served us so well continue his ministry. And so, so I think that's the question that even sessions should be asking is, what kind of minister do we have? Is it, is it a plotter that he, he's going to be good? He can just go week after week and grind it out? Or do we have a minister that might get tired and need a different arrangement with, yeah. with more built in? 